So this is a video of analyzing graphs of functions. So the warm up is to uh, put the polynomial in standard form, find the degree, find the leading coefficient, and find the end behavior. So letter A. Uh, using the equation editor here, f of x equals, I want to find the term with the highest power, 2x to the fifth. And then go in descending order, minus 5x cubed, plus... A 7x. Letter B. Degree is the highest power of x. The degree is 5. Letter C. Leading coefficient. is 2, and it goes with the highest power of x. Letter D, I'm going to write this out in words because it's hard to get the arrow symbol. So on the left, as x approaches negative infinity, y or f of x, f of x, approaches negative infinity. And some of you put uh, a degree positive leading coefficient. That tells you some information, but specifically we're looking for the left and right end behavior. So as x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity. So reviewing the answer is letter A, f of x equal 2x to the fifth minus 5x cubed plus 7x. That's a polynomial in standard form. The degree is 5. The leading coefficient is 2. So the degree highest power of x, leading coefficient goes with the highest power of x. And letter D, the end behavior, as x approaches negative infinity on the left, half of x approaches negative infinity. And then on the right, as x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity. Slide two is just the objective for the day. You can read through that on your own that uh, we'll be interpreting key features of volume functions, giving different representations. Slide four talks about the zeros of the function. The zeros of a function f are the x values where the y value is zero. Graphically, these are places where the function graph intersects the y-axis. The blue points on the function to the left represent the zeros. Without a graph, we can set f of x or y to zero and then solve for x to find the zeros. So the zeros in this case are negative two, one, and three. Or if we wrote the ordered pair, negative two, zero, one, zero, and three, zero. So if I just ask you what the zeros are, you can just write the x values. If where if I ask where they're located at, then you'd write the order of pair. So on slide five here, you're supposed to drag the blue points to where the zeros are. So here, 
And then when I click on that, I get negative 4.8 and zero. If I move it to the left just a little bit, that's probably a little bit better. Negative 4.84 and zero. And then this one's over here. Click on that. So about 0.8 and zero. So slide six, uh, consider the function where the coordinates of the zeros. We found that on slide five, negative 4.84. And zero and the other one is about zero point eight. Uh, one of the classes I just wrote at about negative five, zero and one zero. This is a little bit more precise here, but still decimal approximation. I don't know if I got these uh, same values in the other two classes. I'm pretty sure I got 0 0.80 for this zero, this one here on the left. <coughs> but on the right, I think I had like negative 4.82 in one class or 8.3, so but. These are just uh, decimal approximations. But one thing is the Y coordinate should be zero. So when you're putting the dots on the graph, in other words, you have to make sure that the Y is zero. That's the definition of a zero. The Y value is zero and you find what X is when Y is zero. Uh, slide seven just defines local minimum. A function value f of a is called a relative minimum of f if there exists an interval around a where f of a is the smallest value. In the graph to the left, we can see that f is zero because zero, zero isn't the smallest value in the function ever, that the that function ever takes. But in the green interval of x, it is the smallest. That makes it a local minimum. So this point right here is lower than the surrounding points. So that's a local minimum, or you can think of it as the valley uh, point in the graph there. Next slide uh, defines local maximum. A function value f of a is called a relative maximum f if there exists an interval around a where f of a is the largest value. In the graph to the left, we can see that f of negative two so this scale is two here, this is negative two, and this uh, y value is eight. <coughs> eight is not the largest y value in the graph, but it's greater than the surrounding points here. So that's what makes it a local maximum. So you can think of it as the peak of a mountain. So the maximum, the peak, the minimum is the valley there. All right, and then drag the red point to the local minimum. I want to go right here. Let's see. That looks right. And on the next slide, it says to drag the orange point to the local maximum. So I'm going to drag this over here. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is zero two, so we put it at zero two. There we go. So local minimum negative two, negative two. Uh, local maximum zero two. Or if I just ask you for the minimum, it's negative two. It's the y value. The maximum is at two, or low. Um, local max or relative max. <coughs> but here it's asking you 
the coordinates. So let's go ahead and write the coordinates. Number one. Uh, local minimum. At negative two, negative two. And number two, the local maximum at uh, zero two. And then uh, tw slide 12 is defining increasing a function increases on a, a interval where for any two x values a and b where a is less than b. So you have uh, a less than b here, then f of a is less than f of b. So if this were my x value, a is less than b then f of a is less than f of b. Think about the function going uphill. If the function represents a path that you're hiking or biking, this would be the most challenging part. So it's the uphill portion. In the graph to the left, the orange regions show where f of x is increasing. So this is increasing from negative infinity to, uh, let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Yeah, this is negative 2 here. So from negative infinity to negative two, it's increasing. And then from two to infinity, it's increasing. And then decreasing, a function is decreasing on interval for any two x values a and b where a is less than b and then f of a is greater than f of b. So this y value is greater than that one. Think about a function going downhill. If a function represents a path that you were hiking or biking, this would be the easiest part on the bike. On a bike, you wouldn't have to pedal. You just have to coast down this here. In the graph to the left, the red region shows f of x decreasing. So this is decreasing from negative 2 to 0. We use x values for the interval. All right, so drag the red points. And someone in the other class said, if you do the orange one first, the increasing first. So if I do the orange first here, I don't know why these uh, dots get so huge, but then I can do the red second. I just moved the orange here. Let me do this here. All right, so, whoop. I said I'm in the wrong spot here. There we go. So this is increasing from negative two to zero. It's decreasing from negative infinity to negative 2, and then decreasing from 0 to infinity. So if I do the orange uh, part first, then I can do both uh, red decreasing sections. Right. So the next slide says uh, drag the orange to where it's increasing. So this segment is increasing. This is decreasing here on the left and then decreasing on the right again. So slide 16 shows you a picture of what I just did. And then if I, the letter A increasing in words from negative two to zero, or I could write it as an interval negative two to zero, or I could write it as an equality x is greater than zero and less than negative two. Decreasing the interval notation, negative two to negative, uh, negative infinity to negative two. 
and zero to two. This is the interval notation. So let me write that here. Let's see. This is the interval notation. And let's hit return here. This is the inequality notation. Whichever you feel most comfortable with. So I prefer you use interval or inequality notation instead of the words there. But if you use words like this here, I'll give you credit. So decreasing from negative infinity to negative two and zero to infinity. The second thing here is the interval notation. Negative infinity to negative two and zero to infinity. And then this uh, last is the inequality notation. X is less than negative two and X is greater than zero. This word's decreasing. When is a function const, constant? A function is constant on an interval uh, for x values a and b. In that interval, f of a is equal to f of b. This looks like a flat line. In the graph to the right, the interval on in which the function is constant is shaded blue. What's that interval? So in words, uh, 3, 5. Uh, the interval notation, I'm actually going to use brackets in here, meaning includes, I'm not going to grade you on brackets or parentheses, but in this case, I'm going to put brackets. And the inequality notation. So, let me use the equation enter so I can get the last center equal to sign. So, in words, three to five is constant. The interval notation would be three comma five in brackets. The inequality notation, X is greater than equal to three, less than or equal to five. On slide 18, uh, is the definition of an even function. Y equal F of X is even for each X in the domain of F. F of negative X is equal to F of X. In other words, if I plug in the opposite X value, I get the same Y value out. So here's A, and here's the opposite of A, negative A. Uh, both outputs are the same Y value. This is illustrated by, if I drag this line here, whoops. It says move these back and forth. Oh. So if I move them back and forth, the y values remain the same. Even functions are symmetrical by the y-axis. And both uh, points always have the same height, whether I plug in a or the opposite of a. Uh, the y values are the same. So don't confuse even function with even degree, although 
a uh, polynomial function that is an even function would have to have an even degree. But not every polynomial function that has an even degree is an even function. So that can be a little bit confusing. So you have to know whether you're talking about even degree or even function. But uh, even degree polynomial functions could be A polynomial, let me say that again, an even, a polynomial with an even degree can be an even function. It doesn't have to be, though. So not every uh, polynomial with an even degree is an even function. And then odd functions. A uh, function is odd if I plug in the opposite x value, I get the opposite y value. So in this case, plug in a, I get a y value. I'm plug in negative a, I get the opposite y value. Uh, graphically, uh, odd functions are symmetrical to the line y equal x. And then it says to, once again, drag these points. So no matter where I drag a point, I have a in the opposite of a, but then the y values are opposite. The same, the same distance away from the x-axis. <coughs> and, and a function can be neither even or odd. In this case, uh, f of x equals square root of x. This is not symmetrical about the y-axis. To be symmetrical about the y-axis, we'd have to have a graph that looks like this here. <coughs> so if I trace with a mouse, it would look like this. Uh, um, an even function, an odd function would look like this here. So square root of x is neither even or odd function. So the rest of the slides are practice slides. Um, in the first box here, I'm going to put end behavior. I'm going to type this out in words as x approaches negative infinity. I approaches negative infinity. And on the right, to be consistent with with the notation, let's use f of x here. And the same thing here. Uh, even or odd degree. This is odd because both ends go in opposite directions. And then the intercepts. Notice if I capitalize this, then I can type out the word. So 
zero zero and six zero. Y intercept. Zero zero. So the x intercepts happen where y is zero. The y intercept happens when x is zero. Increasing, decreasing. And the last one's maximum in. So increasing. There's actually two increasing intervals from so negative infinity to zero. And then from four to infinity. And then decreasing. Uh, zero. Zero to four. And max and min. A local max. At zero, zero. Local min. at four, negative 32. All right, reviewing those answers, as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity, as x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity. This is odd degree because both ends of the graph go in opposite directions. The x intercepts are at 0, 0, and 6, 0. The y intercepts at 0, 0. The increasing intervals at negative infinity to 0 and 4 to infinity, decreasing from 0 to 4. Local max at 0, 0, and the local min at 4, negative 32. So practice two, looks like you can just put everything in this one box here, which is probably better. So land behavior. So on the left, as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches infinity. On the right, as x approaches positive infinity, f of x Approaches positive infinity. So on, sorry, negative infinity, sorry. Hmm. 
in other words, on the uh, right here, as you go to positive infinity on the x, y goes to negative infinity. If I can write type positive in here. This is odd degree. Both ends go in opposite directions. Uh, X intercepts. Two point six four zero. One zero. And two point five two and zero. y-intercepts is just one, zero, negative four. Increasing. Move this box out of the way here. So from negative two to positive two. Decreasing. So I can use the equation out of here. So negative infinity. Negative two. And due to infinity. Uh, relative. In negative two, negative twenty. At two twelve. So reviewing the answers here. <clears throat> As x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity. As x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. This is odd degree because both ends go in opposite directions. The x-intercepts are negative 2.64 and 0, 1, 0, and 2.52 and 0. The y-intercept, 0, negative 4. Increasing from negative two to positive two, this segment right here, and decreasing from negative infinity to negative 2.64, I should say. Oh no, negative two is correct. Up to here. So right here. Stops decreasing. And then from uh, 2 to infinity, it decreases. 
and then the relative minimum right here negative 2 negative 20 that should say and relative maximum uh, 212 <coughs> so once again the five key features here So you can use a graphing calculator or try to picture this in your mind as x approaches negative infinity this degree is even and the leading coefficient is negative both ends are going to go down As x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches the same direction. So even degree, negative leading coefficient, both ends are going to go down. So. So this one's obvious because it's written out in an equation form. So I can see that the degree is even here. It's four. And intercepts. So here I'd have to graph this. or I could solve it algebraically. So let me go to the graph here. So negative x to the fourth. Uh, plus 4x squared. All right, so negative 2, 0, positive 2, 0, and 0, 0 for the x intercept. The y intercept at zero zero. Increasing interval. So this end is increasing and this segment is increasing. So negative infinity to negative two. And then the other increasing interval, zero to two. So this is going uphill, this segment over here on the left and then this segment in the middle from zero to two 
Oh, uh, what's out? I got that wrong. So let me change that here. It's negative 4.14 or the square root of 2. And zero to one point four one four and decreasing intervals. Of those also from negative 4.14 to 0. One point four one four to 0. And Get the equation under here. So one point four one four to infinity it's decreasing also. <clears throat> and then Relative minimum. At zero, zero. Negative four point one four and four. So reviewing the answers on slide 23, as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. It's probably best to use the graphing calculator here. <clears throat> Take a look at the graph. As x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. This is an even degree. You can just look at the equation here and say that. see that. The x-intercepts, you have to graph it and take a look at the graph. Negative two zero 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 and two zero, and the y-intercept at zero zero, increasing uh, from negative infinity to negative one point four one four, and increasing from zero to one point four one four, decreasing from negative four point one. Uh, negative 1.414 to 0, and then from 1.414 to positive infinity. And then uh, the relative minimum at 0, 0, relative maximum is at negative 4.414 and 4, and 1.414 and 4. So once again, for this one here, let's go to the decimals graph, uh, the calculator. So 3x 
to the fourth minus 6x squared. Uh, plus three. And then click on these points here, the critical points here. And then fill in uh, the characteristics. Both ends go up. Oh, they have a picture here for this one. <coughs> Intercepts. So uh, negative one zero. Zero zero. And one zero. And Y intercepts. At zero three increasing intervals. So negative one to zero. And one to infinity. And then decreasing intervals. So negative infinity. negative one and <clears throat> zero to one. And then max and min, so relative uh, max zero three, go one zero. And pause the one and zero. So reviewing 
uh, the answer is this slide 24. The end behavior as x approaches the next infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity. Up on the right, up on the left, as x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity. The x intercepts negative 1, 0. Whoops, that's not 0. That's not right here. Negative one zero and one zero. So I'm glad I checked through this. That would have been confusing. If I wrote zero zero, it doesn't cross here. And then uh, y intercepted zero three. Increasing interval from negative one to zero. And then one to infinity. Decreasing from negative infinity to one. And then uh, from 0 to 1. So this segment here. Uh, relative maximum at 0, 3. And relative minimums here in the valleys, negative 1, 0 and 1, 0.